insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 163, Understanding Your Emotions. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my happy and healthy co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? I'm doing all right. This was uh, not, not a bad week. We're a day late here because we had a family fire pit night last night before the weather turned bad on us here so we kind of postponed it a day anything exciting going on with your week um not currently it's kind of been chill week chill week nothing wrong with that nope well not with the temperature at least well yeah temperature is like in the 60s here it's ridiculous so part of our effort in this series of 10 here is we're kind of building on what we kicked off in 161 with our emotional intelligence. So today we're talking about understanding your emotions. <clears throat> emotions are complex and at times can be overwhelming. Emotions help us deal with the world around us and to handle our experiences. On today's episode of Insights into Teens, we're going to take a look at how emotions help us. We'll discuss some basic rules about emotions and we'll look at tips on building emotional awareness. But as always, before we do that, uh, I'd like to take a moment to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find video and audio of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast now, Apple, Spotify, Google, and so forth. We'd also invite you to write in, give us your feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us your show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can DM us on Twitter at insights underscore things, or you can find links to all our social media and more on our official website at insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Yes. Here we go. So we are back again talking about emotional intelligence related things. And like our previous few episodes, this comes to us from kidshealth.org. They say, how emotions help us. So what are you feeling right now as you listen to this podcast or watch this podcast? Are you curious? Are you hopeful you'll learn something about yourself? Are you bored because this isn't something you're really into? Well, if you are, you probably shouldn't be listening or watching this. Yeah. Or are you happy because it's something you enjoy? And perhaps you're distracted by something else, like feeling excited about your weekend plans or sad because you just went through a breakup. Emotions like these are part of human nature. They give us information about what we're experiencing and help us know how to react. We sense our emotions from the time we're babies. Infants and young children react to their emotions with facial expressions or with actions like laughing, cuddling, or crying. They feel and show emotions, but they don't yet have the ability to name the emotion or say why they feel that way. As we grow up, we become more skilled in understanding emotions. Instead of just reacting like little kids do, we can identify what we feel and put it into words. With time and practice, we get better at knowing what we are feeling and why. This skill is called emotional awareness. Emotional awareness helps us know what we need and want, or what we don't want. It helps us build better relationships. 
That's because being aware of our emotions can help us talk about things more clearly, avoid and resolve conflicts better, and move past difficult feelings more easily. Some people are naturally more in touch with their emotions than others. The good news is everyone can be more aware of their emotions. It just takes practice. But it's worth the effort. Emotional awareness is the first step towards building emotional intelligence, a skill that can help people succeed in life. So we've been talking about emotional intelligence, and and numerous times in the past, one of the things that we've tried to do on this podcast is to kind of talk about identifying our feelings and understanding our emotions and realizing that that that's an important part of controlling your emotions and not letting your emotions control you. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you say you are at understanding your emotions? Um, I'd say like a 6, 6 and a half-ish. Okay. Has the podcast helped you at all? Definitely. Um, I remember... I know, I talk about 6th grade a lot, but really, 6th grade was the year when my emotions were rampant, I didn't know how to define them, and I was most prone to lashing out at people. Um, I lashed out at my teacher one time, I've lashed out at my friends multiple times, I've lashed out at you guys. Um, and that was kind of, I feel like that was one of the things that led to the podcast. Seeing what I was going through, you thought that trying to talk about it through a podcast, a method that, you know, would also possibly be helpful for other people, has really helped me. I've realized that after we've been doing the podcast, I've gained a lot more emotional control. I matured a lot from when I first started sixth grade to by the time I left it. So yeah, I definitely say the podcast uh, was really beneficial when it came to helping me understand my emotions. Well, that's good. I'm I'm glad it's worked out for you. I think it's kind of interesting. As I get older, I find I'm always learning something new about understanding and controlling emotions. And I react differently now to, to things that I wouldn't have reacted the same way two years ago. And a, and a great example of this is <clears throat> Sam, your, your brother Sam, had me playing uh, the new... God of War, God of War Ragnarok, and it's a, it's a, that and the one before, it was a very father-son type story-based game, and, and there was a little bit of that in the, in the first game, but the second game, and this is a credit to the, the game developers, it's, it's a very well-written game, very uh, thematic in how you, you play through it, but I found myself reacting to things from a storyline standpoint in the game that touched me in ways and and moved me emotionally in ways that I've never experienced in a video game before. Occasionally a TV show or a movie or a book or something like that. But a video game's never done that to me. And I think part of that is because Sam and I were, while it's not a cooperative play game, you play it individually, we were playing it at the same time. So we would, I would experience something in game and then I couldn't wait to talk to Sam about that as well. And it kind of fed into the whole thing. So even at my age, I'm still learning about emotions. What are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you think there's a point where you become I mean, is it is it an education thing? Is it an experience thing where you become an expert on emotions? Well, I feel like uh, just about with anything, you can learn something new every day, no matter your age. Like, you're not going to be able to hold all the answers of the universe. You're not going to have, like, you can learn how to control your emotions, but there's so many other things that you can experience because there's so much out there that, you may like you may never experience or you'll only experience once and it's like even if you're at a point where like you have a good understanding of your emotions something can happen where you've never experienced it before even through all your years of experience that you have there can always be new things that always happen to you 
That's a very good point. Very well said. What I find is that as I've grown and I've, I've aged, my end goal for understanding emotions has changed. You know, very early on, my goal was really to control my feelings, control my anger because I had anger management issues. And nowadays, I find that my goal isn't so much to control my emotions as it is to understand my emotions to make me a better person, to make me a better father, to make me a better husband. You know, it helps me understanding my emotions and emotions in general have helped me to be more empathetic to other people, to understand different people's points of view, to not jump to conclusions, and, and to be less judgmental. In your understanding and continued understanding of emotions and, and feelings, what are some of the things that you've noticed have changed in you? Can you have, do you have any examples? Um, yeah, I have a few examples. Uh, I used to be the type of person that would get mad very easily. Like, I would be playing a video game and it wouldn't be working or I wouldn't, wouldn't be or like something bad would happen and I'd scream about it. Uh, there have been instances where like my friends did the littlest thing that just got me really mad and I would yell at them or we would get into a fight or something. And as I m matured or at least uh, through getting to understand my emotions more, I started to find ways that I could better control and understand that anger. It's like, uh, and then I understood that, like, half the time when I was angry, things didn't really matter, so it was like I really had no point of being angry at that point, and uh, it stopped me from getting so mad at my friends whenever that happened, and I noticed we had a lot less fights afterwards, um, and I also noticed that other people didn't bug me as much as they used to, so... Um, Learning to control that anger also got me to, you know, kind of loosen up a bit and not, like, always seem so negative. Because I was very negative uh, before we really, before I really understood my emotions. Every day was a bad day. I never found anything good through it. And now, yeah, well, I'm not incredibly positive and I don't always say, like, oh, today's been the best day. Or, like, yeah, I'm doing great. Um... I still, like, find funny stuff that happens, and I'm not always as mad as I used to be. I'm not like, oh my god, this was the worst day ever, but, you know, I'm also not, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of getting a middle ground there, being slightly more positive, at least, so. Yeah, and that balance, that emotional balance that you demonstrate is very obvious to the casual observer. The one thing that I've noticed in understanding my emotions better and making that effort. And it is an effort. I mean, it's not, it doesn't just come naturally. You, you have to observe, you have to be patient with yourself. You know, it's, it's an effort to understand emotions, but I found that in understanding my emotions, it helped me to better understand other people and their emotions. Have you found that to be the same type of thing for you where you understanding your emotions have allowed you to be more in touch with other people's emotions? Yeah, definitely. And again, an example with my friends, whenever I would get mad at my friends and I'd yell at them and we'd get into fights, eventually when I stopped doing that, I kind of became the mediator for my friends' conflicts because they'd get mad at each other and I would kind of be the one to tell them, hey, come on, let's chill out, let's talk about it, it's going to be fine. And I realized that after, like... I basically went from starting the conflicts to trying to understand all the different sides of the argument to stopping them. And another thing is when I would have experiences that some of my other friends would experience. And while they'd obviously not be the same and probably wouldn't react the same, it learned, it got me to learn basic empathy for people. And even though I was empathetic beforehand, I got really empathetic and I was able to better understand what people were going through, especially if we had a similar situation. Yeah, and that's that's a good point. I mean, emotions influence pretty much every aspect of our lives and understanding even them just a little bit better makes us uh, better attuned to the world around us. 
We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the basics of emotions. We'll be right back. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about understanding your emotions. And now we're going to talk about the basics of emotions. Emotions come and go. Most of us feel many different emotions throughout the day. Some last just a few seconds, others might linger longer and become a mood. Emotions can be mild, intense, or anywhere in in between. The intensity of an emotion can depend on the situation and on the person. There's no good or bad emotions, but there are good and bad ways of expressing or acting on emotions. Learning how to express emotions in an acceptable way is a separate skill, managing emotions, which is built on a foundation of being able to understand emotions. It's all good. Some emotions feel positive, like feeling happy, loving, confident, inspired, cheerful, and so forth. Other emotions can seem more negative, like feeling angry or resentful or afraid. Both positive and negative emotions are all normal. All emotions tell us something about ourselves and our situation. But sometimes we find it hard to accept what we feel. We might judge ourselves for feeling a certain way, like if we feel jealous, for example. But instead of thinking we shouldn't feel that way, It's better to notice how we actually feel. Avoiding negative feelings or pretending we don't feel the way we do can backfire. It's harder to move past difficult feelings and allow them to fade if we don't face them and try to understand why we feel that way. You don't have to dwell on your emotions or constantly talk about how you feel. Emotional awareness simply means recognizing, respecting, and accepting your feelings as they happen. So, we talked about negative and positive feelings several times in the past. Do you recognize the fact that that feelings themselves are neither negative nor positive at this point in time? Are you confident in understanding that? Yeah, um, especially through uh, the recent podcasts we've done. uh, Basically, yeah, I definitely understand that emotions can be channeled in both negative and positive ways, but the, the emotions themselves aren't necessarily negative or positive yeah when you when you classify something as negative or positive you're kind of classifying it as having intent and emotions don't have intent emotions are just what we feel given a a number of circumstances um so i think i think the important thing really to understand is that everybody has the emotions the the difficult thing especially when they're, they're strong emotions. You know, there are emotions we have where you can be happy. Being happy and being elated, you know, if you think of emotions on a scale. So as they scale up, there's a point that they reach where you, they tend to overwhelm us. And finding that point of being overwhelmed is, is difficult. You know, if you're happy you're, you can recognize that, you can describe that, you can name that. But as that happiness gets to a point where you're elated or, or more, more happy than that, it tends to, 
to blur your ability to recognize those things. And sometimes that can blind you to other things. Um, have you ever f had a situation where you've seen that emotional scale up where you've started at one level and it's, you know, whether it was anger or, or love or hatred or whatever it was, and it reached a point where you kind of lost control of it? Yeah, um, I probably have the most experience when it came to anger, uh, especially whenever it came to fights with my friends. It's like they did something small and like I kind of got a little angry about that. And then eventually the anger started to rise and rise until I lost control and just shouted at them. And, you know, we got into a fight and so forth. So, yeah, I've had experience uh, when it came to having an emotion start small and then grow to the point where now I couldn't even control it. And understanding your emotions means recognizing that point because we all have the breaking point or the point that we get fed up, whatever you want to call it. Everybody has that point. And you really, you have it for every emotion, you know, frustration, anger, love. You know, there's a point in love where, you know, you may love going to Disney so much. And you may reach a point where you want to go to Disney so much that you can't afford to go to Disney, but you still do it and you wind up making bad decisions because you lose that perspective. So being able to maintain that perspective is a very important part of understanding your emotions. What, what advice would you give to someone if that line was blurred? How would you... How would you kind of coach them to, to sort of bring them back down to earth and be more objective in how they're dealing with their emotions? Well, as somebody that personally has experience when it came to letting their emotions go too far, I'd probably say that what ended up getting me to finally become more rational about it is normally kind of just time to yourself and time to kind of just reflect on the uh, situation on your own. Same thing with realizing how other people ended up reacting to it. And, you know, a big, some of the big things that helped me to finally start to understand and define the lines of my breaking point, um, were when I had time to think about it on my own without anybody else interfering, when I had time to calm down and when I was more logical in my thinking, as well as understanding, you know, getting that basic empathy and realizing that if I lash out, then like other people are going to be hurt or there's going to be negative consequences. So I'd say that the best thing to do is if you do, if, you, if the lines are blurred, the best thing you can do is just get away from people, calm yourself down and then think about, and then think about the situation with, in a less heightened state. I think that's great advice. I think that's, that's kind of what you have to do because a lot of times the emotions that you're fighting with are either originating or being influenced by the people around you. So kind of getting away from that noise so you can calm things down probably helps. Have you run into a situation where you've crossed that line of control and it's had an impact on someone and their reaction to you crossing that line is what kind of pulled you back? Like something that direct? Yeah. Um, but again, I'm going to go to my friends because um, I remember that I'd have a lot of fights with my one friend and uh, I would get mad at them for honestly pretty insignificant reasons. And I would like step back and... With one of my other friends at lunch, I'd kind of talk about it. I remember a specific example is when I was talking with my friend and, like, I had realized what I said was wrong. And it was around the time when I was, when, like, we rarely ever fought. Uh, but we had a fight and I, like, knew that I was in the wrong and I wanted to uh, fix it. And then we had art and I made them a bookmark as an apology. And since we saw, I, we see each other in the morning and afternoon, I gave it to them and we were back, uh, on good terms. Oh, well, that's nice. Have you ever had a situation where you've had a friend or a loved one who you saw across that point and then you actively did something to kind of pull them back 
and help them get back under control. Because it's, it's hard when you see somebody else that you care about go through that type of thing. And it's it's difficult to know whether you should say or do something if it's appropriate and, and what's appropriate. Have you ever run in this situation like that where you've had to be kind of that that calming effect to bring someone back down? Um, I guess I'm going to use an example um, with you sometimes. Um, I, you're definitely doing it doing better, but you, st- <laughs> you, you still tend to yell at technology at times. And when you really like get to the point when like you're screaming um, at it, I'm kind of like, okay, it's fine. Let's just step back a bit. Uh, or like I offer my advice or possible advice, like, okay, maybe it's not this. Let's try stop working with that, or let's just walk away from this, okay? Is that effective with me, though? I mean, I'm not sure. Uh, I I always offer for you to kind of step back. Occasionally you do, occasionally you don't, and then I mean, it seems like you're calmer afterwards. I don't know. So, so you do have that. That calming effect on me when I when I get to that. I'm so glad I could be the the example, the bad example. I'm sorry. I keep mentioning my friends, and I don't and and like I don't want to have to use the same example. No, that's fine. I mean, it is what it is. If if I'm the first one that comes to mind there, then that's perfectly fair. I ask the question, right? I shouldn't ask the question if I don't want to hear the answer. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, we're going to take another break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about building some emotional awareness. We'll be right back. All righty. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about understanding your emotions. And now we're going to talk about building emotional awareness. Emotional awareness helps us know and accept ourselves. So how can you become more aware of your emotions? Start with these three simple steps. Make a habit of turning into... Of okay, I'm sorry. Let me, okay. Make a habit of tuning into how you feel in different situations throughout the day. You might notice that you feel excited after making plans to go somewhere with a friend, or you might feel nervous before an exam. You might be relaxed when listening to music inspired by making, no, inspired by an art exhibit, or pleased when a friend gives you a compliment. Simply notice whatever emotion you feel, then name the emotion in your mind. It only takes a second to do this, but it's great practice. Notice that each emotion passes. Notice that each emotion passes and makes room for the next appear- experience. Rate how strong the feeling is. After you notice the name, <clears throat> I'm sorry, after you, this, this whole section, <laughs> I, we must not have read through this. Yeah. After you notice and name a, an emotion, take it a step further. Rate how strongly you feel the emotion on a scale of 1 to 10, with 1 being the mildest feeling and 10 being the most intense. It's kind of what I was telling you about. Ha, uh, share your feelings with the people closest to you. This is the best way to practice putting emotions into words, a skill that helps us feel closer to friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, parents, coaches, etc., etc. Make it a daily practice to share feelings with a friend or family member. You could share something that's quite personal or something that's simply an everyday emotion. 
Just like anything else in life, when it comes to emotions, practice makes perfect. Although, nobody's perfect. Remind yourself, there are no good or bad emotions. And don't judge your feelings. Just keep noticing them and naming them. So I think that's another interesting point that they make is naming emotions. I think naming emotions, when you feel them, connects you to them. And it makes them a little bit easier to comprehend and understand. When, when you have these feelings, do you, do you find that, that you can accurately name them and better understand them? Uh, half the time. Because, like, there's certain points when, like, I can tell what my emotion is. Like, times when I tell myself I'm tired, times when I sell the, t- tell myself I'm stressed, times when I tell myself I'm angry, and times when I tell myself that I'm sad. Uh, but there's other points when I really don't know what emotion I feel. The best way I can really describe that is possibly numbness, but at the same time, I also still feel something other than numbness, but I don't really know how to define it. Well, and numbness is actually a good way to describe it because a lot of times you, you, when you get overwhelmed with feelings, it can make you feel numb because your body just sort of doesn't process them at that point in time. It's kind of like when, you're, when your nervous system is overstimulated. One of the things that we used to do in football is we would do tackling drills and occasionally you would get what we would call a stinger. You know, you would bang the nerve on your shoulder as you're doing tackling drills and it would overstimulate the nerve and it would hurt when it happened, but then you would just get a cold numbing feeling down your arm because it was overwhelmed. And when we, we experience an overload of emotions, sometimes that's what we do because we can't handle them and we kind of shut down and, and get numb from that type of thing. Does that happen frequently with you? I mean, yeah, sometimes, like, mainly when it comes to my thoughts and, like, the various thought emotions that my thoughts tend to express, I tend to just feel numb. I don't really feel much, but it could just be that I was, like, there's just so much going on in my head that, like, you know, I can't really feel anything. What do you do when that happens? How do you how do you cope? I don't really know how. I kind of just don't talk about it. I kind of just like see if my kind of almost wait on other experiences to jumpstart my emotions almost. I don't really talk to anybody about it. I don't really know how to talk to anybody about it. Do you feel that you have someone that you can talk to about it or do you not even have that that confidant that you think you can turn to the thing is i don't know there's just like occasionally there's just things that i don't feel i can talk to anybody about not that i don't trust people it's just uh, i don't know how to put it in words i don't know how they take it i don't i don't know it's just there's a lot of confusion when it comes to it and a lot of concern about what other people might have might think of it have you ever tried writing a diary or just writing the words down or just writing the thoughts down in like bulleted note form and then going back and trying to rearrange them and make sense out of them? Well, what I normally do when I have these things is I, especially if um, I get home from school, I kind of just go in a place where nobody can hear me and I kind of just rant to myself. Does that help? I mean, I guess sometimes. Have you ever tried recording yourself when you do that and then going back and listening to it? Not really, no. One of the techniques that's used a lot in uh, project management, business analysis, and you know things like that is we you you have to write various types of documents, and those documents help to keep you organized and, and plan and stuff like that. And one of the techniques is like if I'm writing an email, a professional email to someone, you don't try and sit down and write the thing from start to finish and send it because it's 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 a rough draft at that point. So the thought pattern is to sit down and take all your thoughts 
and just make a list of thoughts and what they are. And then walk away. You leave that, come back a little bit later, reread that, and then start taking those thoughts and concepts and themes and delving deeper into them and, and putting them in different orders and rearranging things. And you, you'll find that when you do that brain, that initial brain dump, you get everything out. You know, you'll get all that stuff, especially if you're, if, if, you're agitated or excited or, or, or somebody made you angry or, or whatever. You do that initial brain dump and just, just write. Just write everything that you feel, whatever comes to your mind. And by doing that, you're, you're kind of emptying the trash. And then you can come back later and sift through that trash and keep the good stuff. And by doing that yourself, you can rid yourself of a lot of that emotional baggage that makes you numb. Just just regurgitate everything out onto a piece of paper. Or if you have a digital recorder or a phone, you can do it on your phone. All phones have them. Just get it out. And, and in doing that, you may find that that tends to help you deal with these things better. And once you get it out, come back, you know, an hour, two hours later, after you've had a chance to distract yourself with something else, and then reread what you had. Because chances are there's something in there that you probably need to deal with or, or be concerned with or delve into more deeply or investigate further. But you'll probably find a lot of the stuff that's in there was just noise. It was all that noise that was rattling around in your head because you, we tend to impose circumstances and scenarios when we're in these highly emotional states. And I think once you put that down and sift through it all, what's left over is really how you feel. That's really what your emotions are and what's important. And then you can concentrate on that. And I think it'll help you to manage those things better and to control and understand your emotions better. Does that sound like it's something that, that might be helpful or worthwhile to you? Yeah, at least with the recording part. I might not write everything down because I don't write all that fast and, um, I don't know. It might not be the best method for that, but I definitely think the recording part would probably work because I talk a lot and when I do go on those rants, it probably would be nice to go back and listen to what I was saying. Yeah, I think you'll find that after you do that, and you do it a few times, you're probably going to see kind of a theme of, of what you're throwing out and what you're holding on to. And you're going to hold on to the important stuff there. And that's going to help guide you to understand your feelings a little bit better. When it comes to actually talking to people, I know you talk to mommy, you talk to me, and you talk to us about different things. And I think that's great. There's different, you know, mommy and I have very different skill sets, very different backgrounds and experiences. Is there anyone outside of here, outside of the house, that you feel you can have that kind of conversation with and to have those discussions with? Yeah, thing is, I don't really know. Even some of my good friends, I, some of the stuff I say. Like, I can occasionally have those conversations with one of my friends at lunch, but other than that, I still have a lot of stuff I don't tell people, and uh, half the time I don't really know how to tell people. Even you guys or any of my friends, I don't really know how to say some of the things to other people. How about telling it to yourself? Do you ever tell yourself these things? Yeah, through my rant, through my head. Yeah, I tell myself that kind of stuff. And I think that's the first step. The first step is being able to vocalize it. And if you can vocalize it to yourself, then you may take the next step in finding someone that you can trust, mommy, myself, you know, a friend, and sort of test the waters, try it out, see what you get. Um the the most important thing is being able to say it to yourself because there are times when I get overly agitated with technology, for instance, which we talk about quite often. Yeah. I can't vocalize it. And if I did vocalize it, it would be words that I can't say on this podcast. But that's just how I deal with it. And, and sometimes I have to step away from it. I have to calm down. 
And then I go back and I realize, all right, I was just being an idiot and, and this is a simple fix and I'll go and fix it. Um, but the point is, is that when you pass that threshold, that control threshold we talked about, you don't think rationally and you need some, and these are all meditative techniques really is what they are. I mean, that's, we can call them different things, but these are forms of meditation. They're, they're things that help you focus, change your perspective, shut out distractions, you know, whether you're writing it, you're saying it, you're cursing it, whatever it is, these are all meditative techniques to help you to deal with these things. And you have to find the one that works best for you. And there's lots of different techniques out there. One of them will work for you. Um, but really that's what it is. It, it, it has to, it's that self-regulation where you're trying to get yourself back down from that over excited point. So hey, the first step is talking to yourself. If you can do that, then you can certainly tone it down the, with the next person that you talk to and tone it down with the next person. Every time you vocalize it, you're getting a little bit more control of it. And that's the important thing. So that was all we had today. We're actually going to take a quick break, come back, and we'll get your closing thoughts. All right, so to everybody out there, I just wanted to say that uh, learning to understand your emotions and gaining the knowledge to understand your emotions is something like everything, where it's something that you're going to always be learning. No matter how old you get or how much experience you gain, there's always going to be new things for you to learn. And it's also important to know that if you can't completely understand your emotions, then that's fine too. Know that you are able to understand your emotions. And kind of like what, along with what you said, the idea of Telling yourself first and vocalizing it's the first step. If you're not able to talk to other people about it, at least be able to put it to words. Okay. Sage advice as always. Thank you. Um, that was all we had today. Before we go, uh, once again, I would like to invite our listening and viewing audience, who probably already subscribe if you're listening to this now, to continue to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find video and audio of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. Anywhere you can get a podcast, Pandora, Castro, Stitcher, Podbean, etc. I would also invite you to give us your feedback. Tell us how we're doing. Give us your show suggestions. Tell us what you want us to talk about. Tell us what you don't want us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find high res versions on our YouTube channel. We also stream five days a week on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash insights into things. We also stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate you throwing that our way. Helps to uh, keep the lights on here. Uh, you can find audio versions of this podcast at podcast.insights into teens. And you can find links to all of our other social media on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted normally by you and Mommy, and Ed Sentinel and Tomorrow are not really a monthly podcast anymore, hosted by you and normally my brother Sam. Eventually. Eventually. That's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.